All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Zero Dark Nerdy, the world's most notorious pop culture podcast brought to you by the Believe Podcast Network as well as betonline.ag for all your sports betting needs. If you're here in Greensboro for all your cinematic adventures, be sure to check out Red Cinemas. That is redcinemas.com. We have an incredibly awesome episode for you. We got Britt and Chris from Get Sad Y'all in the building. Britt and Chris, how are you two doing today? Good, how are you? Doing great, doing great. Britt, how are you doing? Yeah, doing good. You know, just uh, hanging in there. There you go. Well, excellent. <laughs> it, I'm, I'm very psyched for this episode. I reached out to, so a little backstory, reached out to them about a couple months ago. We've been trying to make this in the works, and I've been going through a lot, engaged, and this, that, and the other. Took a month off, but we'll get into that into another day. And I am super excited because I got to see them in action at Galaxy Con this past weekend, but we are going to get into that in a little bit. In the meantime, Chris, I know you are like the founder. You started all this with Get Sad, y'all, and then you ended up, or not ended up, but you met Chris like a year later. What was just your like driving force behind, you know, doing this fantastic thing that's called Get Sad, y'all? For all of us emo fans, whether if you're 22 years old or like me, 42 years old, you know, where, where did, where did this all like the inspiration come from? Yeah, sure. Well, I, I fall right in the middle of that range at, at 32. So, you know, I, I grew up in my, my formative years, I guess, in high school, you know, in the, the time of my chems, three cheers and fall boys from under the court tree and stuff like that. So, you know, I grew up in that. I've been always into music since then and kind of always in the back of my mind thought that I wanted to do something in music, you know, whether it was as a day job or, um, just on the side, which is, you know, how good sad y'all is right now. Um, so, you know, I just kind of kept it as an idea for a decade, <laughs> basically. Uh -huh. And then, you know, the idea, like, you know, Emo Night LA started it up and then Emo Night Brooklyn started up and actually Emo Night Brooklyn came out to Chapel Hill in 2016, 2017, something like that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I went with my wife and a couple friends and saw how, you know, how fun it was and how excited the scene was still. And, I was like, well, there's no reason we can't do this all the time, right? Yeah. So <clears throat> I got in contact with Deep South, which, rest in peace, my favorite bar, but it's gone in Raleigh now. Um, and they were like, yeah, let's try it out. We sold it out, did another one two months later, sold that one out, and then I just kind of took off from there. Um, started doing promoted shows pretty soon after that. You know, we brought in uh, the band Chapel, if you know who they are. And then, mm -hmm. yeah, just kind of spun up from there. Um, yeah, met Britt. She wanted to shoot the Chapel show um you know like three months after we started give or take and then just kind of had a working relationship through there through shooting our shows and, and things like that and then you know i don't remember exactly how you got spun up i think maybe i asked you to do merch one day or something and then it just kind of went from there i don't know if you remember <clears throat> yeah no I, I do remember so <laughs> it's actually kind of funny because i think i shot like two shows and we didn't really meet until like the third show or something like that. Yeah, so I do remember that. Yep. <laughs> I thought it was it was super funny. So I came in and, and I shot those shows. And then I think it was like the third show. You walked up to me and you're like, by the way, I'm Chris. And I was like, oh, okay. It's so nice <laughs> to meet you. Um, so if I remember, um, I was just like shooting stuff for you and just giving you stuff to like post or whatever. Um, mm. and then just like tagging you on my uh, photography account and so from there, I think it was like one day you just asked me, you were like, what, is, what are your thoughts on social media? And you were like, because I, I suck at it. I'm no good. I don't enjoy it. And, and I was I like, fucking hate social media. <laughs> I hate it so much. Still to this Instagram. day, fucking hate yes. social media. He, he, yeah, it's <laughs> not his thing. Um, but uh, yeah, he, uh, you asked me if I wanted to like, had any interest in it and I was like oh yeah yes I love social media um so I started running Instagram first um and like that is my baby um something I'm just super proud of I I knew nothing really going into into anything about like building accounts and, and and influencing and growing and things like that and so just organically we've gotten to where we are and I think like I started at the beginning of 2018 and here we are. And I think we're like, what, just, just over 5k finally, like on Insta. And it's just, it's just, it's really cool to just see everything grow. Um, and so then I took over Facebook and um, yeah, just started running with socials. Chris is, Chris is the, uh, the voice behind Twitter though. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay, so Twitter is, is where you shine. That that's if, how if, our, like, if our you want Saba, he's our Twitter guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If you want snarky commentary, then then head to our Twitter. <laughs> Britt's getting better at that though. She's she's I shifting know. into snarky territory. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm trying to be like I'm trying to walk the fine line of like mm, I'm gonna be an asshole kind of. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, it is a fine line for sure. Because like my personality, that's who I am. But right. but then at the same time, I'm trying to be kind of professional. But also, we don't have to be extremely professional. So yeah, no one's professional in the music industry. <laughs> right, <be> right, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so well, you, you know, speaking of which, uh, you know, I thought the set out and layout was fantastic. I mean, you know, I'll go ahead and, and it's fast forward to Galaxy Con. You, you, it was. Kevin Smith panel right before y'all. It was running late. People lined up all over the place. Brett, you just had the best attitude ever. Like, it's going to happen. Like, you know, we're, we're going to get in. And here's our shirts and everything else. And then, Chris, I know you you just got done, like, literally setting up. And I was like, hey, I'm Brian. And you're just like, hey, nice to meet you. I got to get ready to fucking have people rage out. Was <laughs> this, like, you know, as far as to date, was this one of your bigger events as far as like a comic-con and i know like pre-show we talked about what's coming up next but you know let's just talk about a galaxy con for just a second yeah i mean it was i think we did one at the ritz that was bigger potentially i think our first ritz show we had like 750 something like that wow but i mean it's possible that we have that many in that room at galaxy con. I've, i have no idea like no sense of how big that room actually is or anything like that it was yeah it was crazy i mean it went from no one being in there to like wall to wall people in 30 seconds <laughs> yeah. which was which was nuts up, like all three doors at the same time too which yep. i was not expecting and it was yeah you know you played black parade to start it off and i was just like man what a great song to start this whole thing <laughs> off with the kids yeah, go it's, wild yeah. yeah it's a good it's a good hype starter for sure <laughs> especially <laughs> especially when you're running late and you're trying to make up for lost time <laughs> right Right. Well, Brett, what was your just experience with GalaxyCon? And, you know, are you excited to do it next year? Are you coming back next year? Like, let the fans know. I don't know just yet what the future holds for us in GalaxyCon. But um, I do know that this was my first experience just at a con, just in general. Oh, wow. So it was incredible. Just the... <laughs> it's just the, the energy around the people, the inclusivity, just how happy everybody is and just everybody was so just open and they wanted to talk about you know what what kind of music you're into and what they're into and and it was just so easy to drive those connections with people um and then like just like setting up merch and just it was almost like I blinked and then like in the blink of an eye I looked up and there was like people everywhere just waiting to get in the doors and it was <laughs> so insane and then like those doors open and they rushed in there and I there was like the the little like windows on the wall I was like peeping in and I was just like holy shit like <laughs> this is our emo night it was it was incredible oh gosh I cannot wait for the upcoming ones I can tell you like I said y'all <laughs> crush it we'll get we'll get into more of that here in a little bit I don't want to you know get it all out so as far as you two connecting and this was a lot of our like uh, fans from our questions from our fans. And, you know, we'll start with you, Chris, and then we'll go to Brett. What was your first emo show? You were just like, Oh my God, this is phenomenal. And then we'll go to Brett right after. So I kind of have three answers. Is that, yeah. is that cool? Yeah, of course. <laughs> so my, Bring it on. my first, first actual concert was Atlantis. Yes, yes, so I think that falls in the emo category to a point. If you think about it, at least angsty, you know, whatever. Also, she was dope live. Highly recommend. You know, this was... I've always heard that she put 2000? I don't, I don't know. Yeah, it was a long time ago. Um, my first my first show on my own, actually, was the Black Clouds and Underdogs tour in 2004. Uh, Fall Out Boy, Hawthorne Heights, All American Rejects from first to last when Sonny was still in the band and this band called the hush sound. I don't know if anyone remembers that. I know it does. Yeah, yeah. Which I absolutely love that band. They're from Chicago. They only put out like two records and then, nice. and then broke up, but a phenomenal band. Check them out if you don't know who they are. But uh, yeah, that was my, my first show on my own, my first like actual emo show. Okay. And then I still think my favorite show to date was my on the black parade tour in like a 2000 cap room, like just, 
fucking insane, man. Like, nothing will ever top that for me, I don't think. Wow, in a 2000 cap we'll room. Yep. Yep. Yeah, just right after the record came out yeah i mean it oh, sold out right. like instantly and they yeah. released like a handful of tickets afterwards and i got luck- luckily got one of the like after sell things and yeah I man, it was nuts it's one of the only shows that ended and i like actually wanted more you know what i mean like right. show and encore still wanted more <laughs> it's crazy damn yeah because yeah. when they went on tour for that album I, I believe it was it was them and fallout boy and i can't remember who else but it was it was a massive tour after the yeah, fact that you got to see them, so that's yep, yep, yep. That yeah. I think that two thousand person room. Yeah, I think I think that might have been the next tour for them. I honestly don't even remember who opened for them, but yeah, it was. Whew, that was that was a fun one. <laughs> heck yeah, heck yeah, Brett. What was uh, your first emo concert experience? Um. Yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead. Chris threw out his first concert, so mine is my first concert Just was Alan Jackson. Short <laughs> Uh, that. we're in north carolina by the way for those of our fans here in the states and overseas yeah so uh alan jackson i was young i i bet i was like 10 uh, i went with my mom and my grandma and my brother um but my first emo alternative um concert was lincoln park in 2000 Four. 2004 Lincoln Park they had Story of the Year open for them I I think POD maybe um I think that was that tour but that was yeah that was my first like that was that first like uh step into the uh, world of alternative music there you go there you go I was I was very fortunate my my first I guess you could say emo show I'm, I'm a little bit older I'm 42 it was Cat's Cradle, Taking Back Sunday, Go All Your Friends Tour. Solid. And man, it was just mind blowing. I literally went <laughs> to the hospital two days later because my eardrums, it's Cat's Cradle. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Not really noise ordinances out there in Carborough, yeah. but I was. Especially, I especially could, back then. Yeah, yeah, especially back then. <laughs> I went to the doctor two days later. I was like, I really feel like I might be going deaf. And she was like, no, your eardrums have just literally like push themselves inside your ear and eventually they're going to push themselves back out <laughs> and it was just such a great show great experience i mean uh, tell all your friends is and, and i don't have everything from like metal hip-hop the whole nine yards so you can see behind me i got method man i got natural born killer soundtrack the whole nine yards yep. T- tell all your friends is like top five albums of all time for me and uh yeah it, that's just how it is. I, 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 it's weird to, for like when people ask me what my type, what, like, what my top five is, because I always tell them, tell all your friends, and they're just like, I don't, I don't see that in you. And I'm just like, well, that's emo music. Like it's for everybody at yep. the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, segue going to that, like, what are your top three emo albums? I guess of all time, and Britt, we'll start with you, and then we'll. Oh man! <laughs> okay. Like, please don't pick me. Please don't pick me. <laughs> okay, let's see. Um, I, I gotta throw a Paramore one in there because Paramore is just like the ultimate for me. Uh, Haley is my just idol for yeah. so many reasons. Um, but it you I would I would uh throw in Riot at one point in time, but you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna throw in an unpopular opinion. I think hard times is the best one. Nothing wrong with that. That's what you like. Yeah, I you're, do you're not wrong. That's what you like. It's you're not wrong. It's the uh, just um lyrically incredible, just some of her best work sonically again just so many pieces it was so well produced i mean just everything about it i i can't get it it's what i listen to the most when it comes to them um now you got me like god now i gotta think of two more and there's no wrong answer here <laughs> it doesn't have to be in order oh, I, yeah i know like, there's no know, wrong answer it's just your favorites yeah um why don't why don't we alternate why don't you chris you do one? Uh, okay all right so, yeah, <laughs> we'll go to chris so yeah we'll, we'll that's, alternate that's cheating <laughs> sorry <clears throat> I think I don't know if I'm gonna I don't think I'm gonna go with like my three favorite records because I can't I mean I can't narrow it down to three, but I think sure. I'll pick three kind of influential ones for, okay. for me, I guess. Um we'll start with Page Avenue by Story of Years. That was one of the first emo record like 
true, I guess, emo records that I really got into. Um, and I'm, I'm from St. Louis and so is sort of here. So I've seen that band a dozen times, you know, I remember them from the big blue monkey days before they changed their name to story of the year. And yeah, I mean, that record's just fucking incredible. Um, you know, just, it just starts off so, so strong. <laughs> I mean, you've got three singles back to back to back. It's crazy, man. I love that record so much. And yeah, I'm, I, I can't get enough of story there. So, <laughs> hey, that's a great choice. I mean, phenomenal yeah. band.